Bill O'Reilly here, Friday, August 16th, 2019. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. Over the past few weeks, the attacks on President Trump have grown increasingly nasty. Democrats and many in the media have abandoned any pretest that this is about policy, making it clear they intend to destroy the president on a personal level. After failing to take down Mr. Trump with Russia collusion or obstruction, recent attacks on the president have centered around accusations that he's an open racist who promotes white nationalism from the Oval Office. Nearly every Democratic presidential candidate used the recent mass shootings in El Paso and Dayton to smear Mr. Trump, some directly blaming him for the murders. Beto O'Rourke, for example, accused the president of, quote, inciting racism and violence, while Bernie Sanders said he creates a climate which emboldens violent extremists. Congressman Adam Schiff tweeted, quote, white supremacist terrorism is real and a present danger. When the president and other leaders use racist or dehumanizing language, men with guns are listening, unquote. Elizabeth Warren took things a step further, telling the New York Times she absolutely believes President Trump is a white supremacist, saying he's done, quote, everything he can to stir up racial conflict and hatred in this country, unquote. The personal attacks are not limited to Democratic politicians, but the media as well. The day after the mass shooting, CNN's Don Lemon blamed the president, directly accusing him of coddling white supremacists. There are plenty of other examples from the hate Trump commentators. Now, some Democrats are attacking the president's supporters. Last week, Texas Congressman Joaquin Castro, brother of presidential candidate Julian Castro, tweeted out a list of donors to Donald Trump's campaign. You only do that if you want to bring scorn to those people. And this was not a list of wealthy elite or giant corporations, but of regular folks, including numerous small business owners. The message was clear. Stop giving money to the president or else. These attacks have absolutely nothing to do with public policy or even political ideology. They are personal, nasty, and will no doubt continue into the 2020 election cycle. More on this in my message of the day coming up. We'll deal with the white supremacist thing moments away. The Amazon Capital One data breach just hit. 106 million of us just had our names, home addresses, banking information exposed. Forget credit card theft. Your far greater risk is home title fraud. Title fraud is rampant because identity thieves figured out the title and mortgage to our homes are kept online. Their big payday comes by forging your name off your home's title. So it appears they own your home. Then they borrow all your equity till it's gone. Forget your insurance, bank, or identity theft program. They don't touch this. Home Title Lock does. And they do it by locking down your home's online title and mortgage. The first 60 days after crimes like the Amazon server Capital One breach are crucial. So I got you 60 risk-free days of Home Title Lock protection. Claim your 60 risk-free days at HomeTitleLock.com and enter your home address to see if you're already a victim. That's HomeTitleLock.com, HomeTitleLock.com. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day, Creating Myths. In 1933, most likely in a small smoke-filled pub, Someone came up with the idea of creating a giant lake-bound creature to attract attention to a remote region in central Scotland. It was the middle of the Great Depression, and to say people were suffering economically in the Loch Ness area is the understatement of the 20th century. Things were monstrous, so why not create one? Maybe folks might go up there to check out the mystery, then spend money in the pub. It worked. Tourists and money poured in, followed by actual scientists who eventually put out a statement, quote, the scientific community regards the Loch Ness Monster as a phenomenon without basis, unquote. In other words, a hoax. 
Today in America, the monster is President Donald Trump. And those who would like to destroy the president are trying to create a fearsome creature, a white supremacist with colossal power who is wreaking havoc on the nation. After failing to cripple Mr. Trump with charges of conspiring with Russia to subvert the election of 2016, the race card has been dealt again. But it's not that Trump is a beneficiary of white privilege anymore. Now the president is a full-fledged white supremacist. Well, in my opinion, the Trump haters are creating a myth similar to Nessie. So let's examine what's happening in a fact-based way. If you understand what white supremacy really is, you know the best example is the Third Reich. Under Hitler, the German people were told that they were the master race, based primarily on their Aryan-Caucasian bloodlines. If you read my book, Killing the SS, you will learn how that white supremacist philosophy was put into policy. The result? Millions dead, tens of millions brutalized. While researching my upcoming book, The United States of Trump, we could not find one example of the president discussing skin color in a pejorative way or promoting Caucasian dominance. Likewise, when Mr. Trump criticizes a staunch opponent like Congressman Elijah Cummings, some allege that skin color motivates the controversy, but there is absolutely no evidence that is the case. Without facts, branding the president a white supremacy adherent becomes a cheap piece of political propaganda. In the upcoming Trump book, I spend some time on the Charlottesville, Virginia controversy, and the evidence will demonstrate that white supremacy did not play a role in the president's statements. Of course, for Trump haters, no amount of evidence will back them off of racial condemnation. But fair-minded Americans should closely scrutinize the racial demonization that is currently embraced by some Democrats and members of the national media. Of course, many Americans do not approve of President Trump. That is their civic and constitutional right. But he is not a white supremacist and does not seek to empower those vile, dangerous people. Another myth that should be deposited at the bottom of Loch Ness. For more news and honest analysis, please head on over to BillOReilly.com and check it out. Coming next, something you might not know. It's an uncertain world out there, you know that. Disaster can strike at any time. So you need to be prepared to protect yourself and your family. One way to do that is with freeze-dried food. It tastes good, it's healthy, can be stored for 25 years. That's why I'm happy to tell you about a company I recommend, Wise Foods. I have experience with them myself. During Superstorm Sandy, I lost power for seven days, all of my refrigerated food done. But my food supply from Wise Foods was as fresh as the day I received it. Visit Wise Food Storage, one word, wisefoodstorage.com slash bill, and explore their starter kits and long-term emergency food options. They are even offering free shipping, plus a big discount of 25% off for my listeners. So please go to wisefoodstorage.com slash bill, wisefoodstorage.com slash bill, or you can call 855-269-0501. That's 855-269-0501. Now the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. Alcohol remains one of the biggest industries in the USA. Sale of beer, wine, and spirits generated more than $250 billion in 2018, close to double the revenue brought in by soda or other carbonated beverages. According to Gallup's annual consumption habits survey, 65% of Americans consider themselves casual drinkers averaging about four pops per week. That number has held steady for the past 20 years. The poll also shows America remains, for the most part, a beer country, with 38% saying they prefer a cold one at the end of the day. But for the first time ever, liquor is in a statistical tie with wine as America's second favorite alcoholic beverage. 
Young people are primarily responsible for that rise, with 39% of millennials saying they prefer the hard stuff, just 16% opting for wine. While the idea of the next generation turning to hard liquor might be concerning, young people are actually consuming less alcohol than their parents. Teen drinking continues to decline. According to a 2018 study by the Center for Disease Control, about one in 10 high school seniors say they have been drunk in the last month. Five years earlier, that number was one in four. Quite a decline. I hope that study is true. So why are young people abstaining more than the older generation? Well, there are a few theories. First, they are more health conscious. Education on substance abuse, far more prevalent in schools than years ago. Social media also playing a part in keeping young people relatively sober. With cameras on every mobile device, Teens are increasingly afraid their drunken antics may just turn up on Instagram or Facebook, and everyone, including their parents, would see it. Sadly, it could be that young people are simply replacing alcohol with another intoxicant, marijuana. While kids may be boozing less these days, the percentage of young people smoking pot on a daily basis is up double digits, a trend that is likely to continue as more states move toward legalization. We'll be right back. Americans all over the country are voting with their feet, fleeing high-tax states like California and New York for states with lower tax burdens, including Texas and Florida. If you are thinking of voting with your feet, you need to check out realestateagentsitrust.com. At realestateagentsitrust.com, you can find a great agent in your hometown who will help you sell your home quickly and for top dollar. And wherever you're looking to move, you have great agents there too. They'll work on your behalf to find you a great new home and be your advocate so you can buy without the stress, worry, and travel of buying remotely. All agents have been heavily vetted for their past performance and, like you, are fans of this program. They are also waiting to welcome you into their communities and help you find your dream home. So get moving with realestateagentsitrust.com. That's realestateagentsitrust.com. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.